Hello and welcome to Revision Tips for SIPS Level 2, Certificate in Procurement and Supply Operations, Module 4, which is Systems Technology. These revision tips cover Learning Outcome 1, which is to understand the use of system technology, databases and how they contribute to procurement and supply. So data is input into systems throughout the procurement cycle. They do it when budgets are set, when requisitions and purchase orders are raised, when stock is moved either internally or externally, when invoices are received, approved and paid. That data can be analysed to provide evidence of key decisions such as determining order quantities or calculating lead times and monitoring expenditure against budgets. So in terms of the stages of procurement, in, in terms of analysing, we're looking at budgets and expenditure data. When we're sourcing, we want to know about our suppliers. <clears throat> when we're contracting, we want to understand the supplier and contract details, like the value, the duration of the contract. And if you're in the public sector, you may enter this onto a public contracts register. With requisitioning, we need details of the need, which is data-based. For purchasing, we'll need the purchase order, the date it was raised, the value, the detail of the supplier. And then when paying, invoice details, the value of the invoice, the date it was received, authorised and paid. And you can see that now we've captured all of this data, we can do something with it. Historical data and future forecasts will help an organisation to identify what its demand is for a commodity and that's likely to help an organisation to buy things in a much more organised and planned way. So analysing the historical data can reveal a few things. Firstly, what an organisation has purchased in the past, how frequently it's purchased it and the volumes, and if more than one part of the organisation purchased the items, it can suggest that purchases could be consolidated. Now calculating the forecast for demand will help an organisation to decide on the best time to place an order. Demand management is changing the patterns of consumption or ordering to minimise cost. An organisation can either take action to reduce what they buy and make savings or optimise demand buying exactly the right amount at the right time. So on the, the um, examples you can see on the screen, organisation A requires a certain amount of goods over a three month period. Whereas B requires um, the same amount over a three month period, but has done it differently in different months. So the first graph shows what the supplier needs to produce each, each month in response to the orders. And if a supplier works with the two organisations to manage demand, they could smooth demand so they can produce the same amount of goods each month and still meet their organisational needs. Budgets are a forecast for the amount an organisation will spend on a commodity. And it's used to set financial targets along with other data like an estimate of how much a commodity will be wasted in production, what the delivery costs will be and how many orders will be placed. Procurement and supply can achieve efficiencies for the organisation by obtaining lower contract prices through the sourcing process or through negotiation. And these savings can be measured using the difference between the price paid before the changes and what is paid after the savings were achieved. So organisations will set targets and those targets are aimed to focus employees and suppliers' attention on the key areas that will help it deliver its strategy. You measure performance and record data in IT systems and databases. Analyse and interpret the data to identify whether targets are being met and compare actuals with forecasted expenditure. Now data can be used to compare actuals against the forecast 
and the difference between what was planned and what actually happened is known as a variance. And analysing variances can help organisations to understand past activities and forecast for future demand. An overspend is a variance when the spend is greater than the budget. An underspend is a variance when the spend is less than the budget. Purchase orders provide line item details and you can use this detail to analyse spend. It can help to identify opportunities for improvements like, like um, adjusting the order quantities or the frequencies, recognising efficiencies in previous periods to order goods and implement in other areas. Purchase orders and lead times are the time between the order being placed and the goods and services being received. The purchase order records the date that the order was placed. It can be used to identify the lead time and understanding that lead time for an order can help to ensure that in future goods are ordered so they arrive when they're needed. And lead times are measured as part of suppliers and contract performance management. We're now going to look at the differences between an internet, an extranet and an intranet. So the internet is the World Wide Web, a global network that can be accessed by anyone. It's a very quick and easy source of information about markets and suppliers and a central method of research within procurement and supply. Organisations can publish information and plans on the internet to communicate with suppliers during the sourcing process. And data sourced from the internet needs to be validated to ensure it's reliable before procurement can use it for decision making. The one in the middle is an extranet. So a SIPS, the SIPS website, for example, is an extranet because to access it, you need a membership number and a password. So it's a private network or a web portal that's used to connect and share information between suppliers and their customers or partners. And it can be used to provide up to date information without having to issue notifications. And it's a secure way of sharing information because the users need to log on using a password to access the site. And the final one is the intranet. This is within your company, so employees are the only ones that can access it. A private network used to share information inside the organisation, giving your staff access to the right information when they need it and can help to promote contract compliance and working within the requisition rules. Others are things like e-marketplaces, websites like Amazon that bring multiple buyers and sellers together in one central marketplace. Suppliers can provide information about the goods and services and buyers can compare several products and services without the need for a formal sourcing process. The buyer can purchase the goods and services and payment can be made quite securely. It can be open for all organisations and suppliers to use or it can be closed where only select organisations and suppliers are given permission to access it. Now, customers and supplier websites are likely contain lots of information. This is the sort of information you might see on a supplier's website. The types of goods and services they provide, where they're based, who their customers are, whether the organisation is making a profit or a loss, although some of this information can be obtained through Companies House in the UK. What plans the organisation has in the future? And some of them will use social media, which are websites that allow people and organisation to share content on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or, uh, YouTube. And it's useful to see what feedback customers share about suppliers. The information you obtain from social media shouldn't be used to decide whether to work with a supplier, but it can be used to start a conversation, to discover the validity of comments, or to help create a question to ask all suppliers as part of the sourcing selection process. So in your own time, do some research on a local business like a car dealer or a hotel or a cleaning service. 
and see if they, you can locate any feedback about the business on the social media. What kind of ratings or comments do they have? What are the common themes? What kind of questions might you want to ask the supplier as part of your selection process based on the information you found? Try and write down at least five. Let's go through some of the e-sourcing terms now. So the E at the start indicates that these processes are done electronically using computer systems. So e-sourcing is using electronic systems to help sourcing in the procurement process to find suppliers, select suppliers, including small businesses and those located in other parts of the world. To manage our procurement activities, like the sending and receiving of tenders and quotes, making procurement and supply quicker and more efficient. E-requisitions are used to request an item from a person within your organisation, which can be raised by selecting an item from an e-catalogue or entering text into an appropriate field in the e-procurement system to explain what it is you, you're looking to buy. Those e-catalogues are a database of goods and services that a supplier provides, and it's used by the buyer to identify the exact product or service required. It will indicate bulk discounts where appropriate. And then e-ordering is the process of sending a purchase order to a supplier electronically by email or an e-procurement system. E-ordering can be carried out automatically by stock replenishment systems. So when the stock reaches a certain level, it will automatically order a replenishment. And e-invoicing is the process of issuing invoices electronically either by email or through an e-procurement system. The invoice is a request that comes from a supplier for the payment for the goods or services that they've provided to your organisation. We're now going to look at stages in the e-tendering process. Let's start with pre-qualifying suppliers. This is about gathering key data on your suppliers, such as the nature of the goods they supply the insurance or permits they have, details of their financial accounts, and information on their health and safety or corporate social responsibility policies. You can review the information provided to determine which, if any, supplier you will approve to submit a quote or tender. And that can help to make the sourcing process easier and less time consuming because participating bidders have already been approved as suitable. And then the process of receiving and evaluating quotes. This is the uh, diagram on the lower part of the slide. So tenders or quotes are received from suppliers to um, an agreed date. A cross-functional panel of people will work for the procuring organisation and come together to evaluate the scores on the technical part of a supplier's bid. Sometimes external advisors are used if expert knowledge is required. The evaluation panel scores are input into the e-tendering system, which may need to go through a moderation process if the um, evaluators didn't agree. And then the system calculates the overall score, taking the weighting from different sections into account to determine which supplier to select. Thanks for watching.